So we are living through a, an insane situation with the climate right now. Take a look at this. So uh, this is on Alaska weather. The Kodiak Tide Gauge Station recorded an amazing 67 degrees Fahrenheit yesterday. This is late December. This is a new statewide temperature record for December. The Kodiak Airport recorded 65 degrees. This broke their monthly record by 9 degrees Fahrenheit. And the weather balloon that was launched um, confirmed the readings. It was 67 degrees in southern Alaska in late December. Now, if you think this is a one-off, look at this. Saying December 2021, this is from Jim Cantori of the Weather Channel, has been a warm month in the eastern USA is an understatement to say the least. The number of warm records that were broken in December 2021 in the north, in the east of the U.S., 8,983. Cold records, only 408. 8,983 warm records were broken in the eastern U.S. Only 408 cold records were broken. There were tornado warnings on New Year's Day in Tennessee and parts of Kentucky. And what everybody needs to understand is, as a general rule, January is a very stable weather month. You're supposed to be like solidly in the winter and the temperatures are just generally cold. But we're seeing spring-like weather events in the middle of winter. So in other words, you have cold fronts hitting warm fronts. You have moisture hitting dry air. You have all these conditions for unstable weather. And we're getting it in the middle of the winter. We're getting it on January 1st. This is unlike anything we've ever seen. I think we shattered the record, too, for um, the power of the December tornadoes that we had. That's something that was unprecedented. Now, some of this is uh, attributable to the La Nina season out west. And they're getting a whole bunch of snow in the northwest and rain in the west. And they had a severe drought going on. So in some ways, that's, that's a positive thing that they're getting it. But... Without a doubt, as we're learning from all this new information that's coming in, we're seeing real climate change, and it's happening faster than anybody previously thought it would happen. And every time they go back and check this thing, scientists say it's worse than what we thought the worst case scenario was. They say, in fact, let me pull this up, because I, I went through... Um, an article on this, and they had some incredible information. A study published last month in Nature Communications noted that as the Arctic continues to warm faster than the rest of the planet, evidence mounts, mounts that the region is experiencing unprecedented environmental change with the hydrological cycle that pro projected to intensify throughout the 21st century and increased evaporation from expanding open water areas and more precipitation, the paper projected the Arctic winters will experience more rain than snow sometime beginning in the 2060s. Do you understand that? The paper says sometime in the 2060s, there will be more rain than snow in the Arctic. In the Arctic. Again, I just told you, in late December... It was warmer in Alaska than it was in San Diego. What? Scientists also warn that the thawing of Arctic permafrost in the northern parts of the state constitutes a geological time bomb set to release potentially devastating quantities of methane, a super potent greenhouse gas whose emissions are roughly 87 times more potent than carbon dioxide emissions over a 20-year period into the atmosphere. So at some point, the permafrost is going to be released into the atmosphere. That's 87 times more potent than carbon dioxide emissions. And it's already game, set, match. I mean, look, we used to talk about 400 parts per million. It's game, set, match. We get over 400 parts per million. We've been over 400 parts per million per, for a while now. This is really, really, really not good. And we're still talking about... We're still talking about um, 
not making a full transition to green and renewable technology. We're still hanging on to fossil fuels. The Democrats can't even get their shit together to pass even a watered-down version of a Green New Deal. On this front, it's hard not to be full 100% pessimist. Are we really going to be dependent on some mega genius somewhere coming up with a solution to somehow vacuum carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases out of the air? Is that what we're going to have to rely on? And what if we can't figure that out? What if we can't figure out some new technology which can help reverse the worst impact impacts of climate change? Look, we've talked about it a number of times. I actually think that the messaging on this has been wrong for a very long time from the media and from scientists because everybody you know, talks about like, oh, sea level rise. Well, that's serious, of course. And some of the cities that are at sea level, it's like, okay, eventually, bye-bye. Whether it's, you know, New Orleans is right there, Miami. These are all cities that are in for some serious trouble and may eventually be wiped off the map. Um, but there are bigger things that can happen with climate change, which are even more devastating. For example, at, one po at some point, the Middle East becomes uninhabitable. And then you're going to have a great exodus from the Middle East. That's going to lead to a, a migration crisis in a variety of different places. That leads to instability. That leads to more systems failing because they can't handle the flow of migrants. Um, you're going to have increased famine and drought. Again, uh, you see the worst of people when they're hungry and they can't get food. That could easily lead to war. You could see wars over water. Freshwater resources dwindling more and more and more. Eventually, there will be wars over water. That's going to happen. That's going to be a thing. And right now, we are the frog in the pot of boiling water. Like, we're going to be killed. It's getting us. But at no, there's no one point where you realize, like, oh my god, we need to do something. It's already too late. Warmer in Alaska in late December than in San Diego. I've been in D.C. a lot, of course, for Crystal Kyle and friends. Um, it was unseasonably warm all the way until January 1st. And actually now, you got more weird stuff happening. Right now, D.C. and Virginia are getting hammered with a snowstorm. I'm here in New York, and there's no snow. <laughs> and it's warmer. It's almost like the climate is changing. And with that, you get an increase in all sorts of extreme weather events. Because what the right-wingers like to do is say, Oh, really? There's global warming? Then why is it cold? Well, you get... Because it's not just about... That's why they stopped calling it global warming and started calling it climate change. It's really more that the climate changes. And that you get an increase in all kinds of extreme weather events. And we're currently seeing that come to fruition. Um, but in the eastern U.S., so far for this winter. It has been way warmer, and that's why I showed you all the warm records being broken. But very strange stuff going on, man. Very strange stuff going on. Um, and now I believe it's more noticeable than it's ever been previously. And I think a lot of people are noticing it. I mean, I know people who are conservative-leaning who are even like, man, climate change is definitely real, and there's all sorts of crazy stuff going on. Unfortunately, ExxonMobil and Chevron and the fossil fuel industry totally bu have bought and owned our, go our government, so that's why we can't get any movement in the right direction, uh, even though everybody recognizes that we're in a catastrophic situation. Hey y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.